Welcome to In The Room, where we explore the elusive world of casting for film, TV, and commercials. Join us as we interview directors, writers, producers, and actors, taking a deep dive into their experiences with casting and how the ultimate decisions are made in bringing a story to the screen. Get an inside look at casting and find out what really goes on in the room. you in here spanking your monkey, am I? Where did all the texts go? Rudy. Hey, little bro, what's up? Are you in my house right now? Uh... You gonna come out now, Rudy? Is your little game over now? He just doesn't know how to deal with having a famous brother. Well, I don't know how to deal with having a loser brother. Welcome <laughs> to my first day on a microphone. <clears throat> Welcome to In the Room. I'm Heather Kafka, and I'm an actor. I'm John Williams. I'm a casting director. I'm Kendra Franklin. I'm an actor and a casting assistant. And today we're in the room with writer-director Brian Poyser. Brian Poyser is a two-time Independent Spirit Award nominee who has written and or directed projects for HBO, Comedy Central, Ridley Scott Associates, and the USA Network. His features have screened at Sundance, South by Southwest, and BFI London. His second feature, Lovers of Hate, which we'll be discussing today, premiered in competition at the 2010 Sundance Film Festival and was nominated for the John Cassavetes Award at the 2011 Independent Spirit Awards. Lovers of Hate is a savage comedy about deceit and sibling rivalry, centered on two estranged brothers, Paul and Rudy, who have nothing in common but their love for Rudy's soon-to-be ex-wife, Diana. When the opportunistic Paul whisks Diana away to a romantic mountain retreat, he has no idea that Rudy has made it there first, and from the shadows of the posh chalet, Rudy tries desperately to sabotage the relationship. This film stars Alex Karpovsky as Paul, Chris Dubeck as Rudy, and me as Diana. <laughs> so be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's kick it off. Yeah. So talk a little bit about when filmmaking and this idea of wanting to make films and wanting to tell stories really happened for you. Uh, yeah, well, it was – I am – an unusual it's unusual in that I grew up in a creative household so my mom is an artist uh, an illustrator so she did science fiction and fantasy book covers uh, basically throughout my childhood and my sister and I actually were her models constantly <laughs> so she would like dress us up like trolls or like <laughs> aliens <laughs> or fairies as like you know six, seven-year-olds and take pictures of us and then paint her paintings based on that. So, like, I am on the cover of, like, dozens of of uh, science fiction and fantasy books throughout the 80s, but then she also moved on to children's books. So my sister and I, we were in Rapunzel. So she was Rapunzel and I was Prince Charming. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. It's not uh, awkward at all. And then uh, and I also was started doing romance covers Believe it or not, but they oh. were like Christian romances, so they're very chaste. So you weren't shirtless with no. a fan blowing on your hair. Plenty of shirts, but like just a hand touching a face. Okay. <laughs> Hot. Uh, and, uh, so like <laughs> having that as like my like that was just like what I grew up around. Like to me, like the, the friends of mine who had moms and dads who had just like regular jobs, like that was weird actually. Um, so, so I, and, and that's one of the things that I realized when I started going to film festivals with my own work was that like, that's what my mom was doing by bringing her paintings and her art to conventions, science fiction and fantasy conventions all around the U S and in Canada. And they even, you know, went to, to Europe and stuff. I, I never got to go to Europe, but, um, 
so that was very familiar, actually. Um, so, and and so I, I, you know, my my parents got divorced when I was ten, and my stepdad, uh, he was a bit more practical minded, and you know, I was, but he also like definitely like you know, I would not have been a filmmaker if it wasn't for him showing me all these movies that were like inappropriate for me to see at like 13, 14 years old. Like he's like, you've never seen Taxi Driver? <laughs> you've never seen Midnight Cowboy? Oh, Brian, Jesus Christ, we gotta, we gotta get on this, you know? What do you mean you've never seen The Clockwork Orange? <laughs> like, oh my God. But it all of those movies. the 70s and 80s. Yeah. I have a similar experience yeah. with The Clockwork Orange. Yeah, but like, all, but those movies like, you know, just totally blew my mind as far as like what movies could be and what they could be about and what they could kind of like the, you know, sort of are obviously the darker aspects of of humanity that they could kind of uncover. And and that just really got me excited. But, you know, he also was like, you sh you know, I mean, I, w I wanted to make films and even made this really ter terrible vampire movie when I was in high school. It was like my final project that I was in high school. Where I was like trying to do this like AIDS metaphor, but we like shot it on VHS with like actors who didn't really know what they were doing. I mean, it was just terrible. <laughs> but it literally consumed my life the last like couple of months that I was in school, where I just ditched all of my classes and just went into the AV closet, which was literally a closet with like two VCRs hooked up to each other, and edited my movie. And like that was my life, you know. And so that's when I was like, okay, that's what I want to do, you know, um, this piece of shit that I can never show anyone. <laughs> Even now. I, like I want to make more of 16 these. 16 years old, 17 years old when I made it, and I'm still embarrassed about it. But it did set me on this path. Um, and so then I went to, to, to UT, and I was a psychology major to like try to do something practical for like literally half a semester. But then once I was away from my mom and stepdad and you know like i just was like i'm just switching to film so so i studied film at, at ut oh wow yeah. So yeah. you graduated well, with a film degree mm -hmm. yeah yeah i was a psychology major for like mm -hmm. two months what do you think it was about doing the uh vhs to vhs in the closet that was just so like i mean sparked i, it, I think? think it was like it was kind of interesting where like i they so at my school they had this thing called senior project where basically you could take your senior year and do some sort of project. So I had these two friends of mine, their senior project was basically taking over the, um, the spring play. So they, these, these two girls who are two of my best friends at, at school, they did grease. So like they took it over, they directed it. Um, my, our, our theater teacher, he sort of over, you know, oversaw it, but it was really them. Like they figured out how to get like a car on stage for like the grease lightning scene and stuff like a literal car on stage and you know and I I got to be in it and you know it was it, it so so they did that and then my sister she like she was you know she's a an artist too and so she did like a calendar like she drew all the pictures for like a, a calendar and I was like I want to make a movie but I don't really know what that meant um so they paired me with this guy who I don't really know he was like somehow one of the teachers knew that there was somebody in rural Connecticut where I grew up um where I went to high school who had written a screenplay and so they're like, you should talk to this guy. <laughs> so I went and had multiple meetings with this guy. And, this, you know, I don't remember what, maybe he was a psychiatrist or something. He had like a really nice office in his house. And he sat with me and gave me feedback on my script. And the script was horrible. And I'm just like, ever since, I've just like, that guy was like literally a saint for like sitting down with this 16 year old kid. Like your vampire story that you're trying to make very serious is just. Not good. Here are some ways to make it better. But he like gave me some screenwriting books and stuff. So you know, having an adult take me seriously as a, even though I'm sure he's pretending to, but like still, uh, that effort that he put into it um, and to kind of like guide me and stuff was was you know made me feel like oh well you know yeah I'm a filmmaker that's what I'm doing yeah even though you know we shot on VHS in my you know in my in my house and at our school and. But but I, w I will say that, like, the ending of the movie, still bad, but the ending of the movie, I started trying to figure, I started actually figuring out shots and, like, screen direction and, like, you know, sound design and music. You know, I was like, cause, because I literally had to edit it from beginning to end because it's linear, you know. There's no nonlinear editing, so it was like I had to start cutting from the beginning, you know. Um, by the end of the movie, I kind of figured out a few things about filmmaking, <laughs> And so, uh, so that was that was gratifying. 
That's um, awesome. That's yeah. fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over here thinking about the type of camera you were using back then, too. I mean, it's literally just a VHS camcorder. Right. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what VHS is, yeah. you can now find our childhood yeah. in a museum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did it have, like, we had one of the original ones yeah. that had to be plugged in. No, it was it, it was ba- it was battery powered, and and our and our uh, uh, our AV teacher he took it upon himself to be the DP because I think he could tell that I didn't know mm. what I was doing, and it was kind of like the, the school's camera. And I was like, if I give it to this guy, he's gonna this thing ain't coming back. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Mr. Ma- Masakovich or something, I can't remember what his name was, but um, yeah, he shot it, and I'm sure the whole time he, as we were, my actors were doing their terrible dialogue, he was just like. <laughs> Okay, no, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's a good take. Well, then, <laughs> at some point, I yes. know you made Deer Pillow. Yes, yes. And then, how did? And that was your first. Yeah, first film. feature. And then, how yeah, did yeah. you go from doing the, the, that the experience VHS. to yeah. to saying I'm gonna make another movie? Well, I mean, I mean, the the cool thing was is that UT at the t- at the time it was before digital video cameras had come around. I mean, there were VHS cameras and they were like beta cameras and stuff. And, you know, but, but, but like the DV revolution hadn't hit yet. It actually hit like the year after we graduated, uh, me and my, my class. Um, so in our, in, in film, my film one, like we were literally using these Bell and Howell hand crank cameras oh, wow. shooting on black and white, uh, 16 millimeter, like these cameras that were used during world war two, actually, I mean, not, not the, I don't know if the actual models were were used, but but that's the era of, of those that that technology. So it, they kind of brought it, brought us back to basics. So we would shoot on black and white um, first with like, you know, no no sound. You'd have to in camera edit. So you'd like roll camera and then figure out what your next shot was and shoot that. And you know, so there's no editing. Mm-hmm. And when we did edit, it was like cutting and taping 16 millimeter uh, together, as film together. Um, so so the whole digital editing systems didn't. Really, ex- I mean, they were around, but they were very expensive, so mm-hmm. the school didn't have them. Or we had like a couple of them for the grad students or something like that. So, so that was actually really great. Like we basically, you know, the the film, the, the kind of structured the film education to bring you literally back to the beginnings of cinema mm-hmm. and try to figure it out from there, um, and figure out how to tell stories with these very with all these limitations. Um, and so then, uh, when I was after I'd graduated and when I was getting ready to, to make Dear Pillow, um, that was in 2003, and they had just, Panasonic had just put out this camera called the DVX100, which was like the first um, digital video camera that shot on tape that could emulate film, because it, it could shoot in 24 frames per second instead of 30. And so that made a huge difference um, in terms of the look. And so actually people thought that we shot that movie on film. Some people, you know, um, because that that technology that was available for a camera that was like thirty five hundred bucks or something um, at the time um, was pretty new and novel. And actually, our, our that feature was one of the first features that was released that had been shot on that camera. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So so, but but myself and Jake Vaughn, who was my classmate. Um, who I made movies with for like 10 years, like, you know, he and I essentially used the skills that we learned kind of going back to the basics and being very like meager with how many shots we're going to take or how many takes we're going to do. And, you know, the discipline that we learned basically when you were shooting on film and literally money was flying out of your pocket every time you rolled camera, we took that to, to that film. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then from Dear Pillow. Yeah. Yes. How did Lovers of Hate come to be? Well, so after Dear Pillow, that was a that was a very uh, you know a lower budget movie than Lovers of Hate, believe it or not. Um, and we, uh, uh, but that movie was really successful on the festival circuit. I mean, we like played at like twenty five festivals all over the world and won some awards and got nominated for a Spirit Award. And so it kind of like. Um, opened up this opportunity because the University of Texas at the, at that time and, you know, 2004, uh, they'd just started something called Burn Orange Productions that was like this idea to basically get UT students to work on features um, and to produce features from UT. It was like they set up these sort of shell companies, uh, Burn Orange Productions and the UT Film Institute, and they had some sort of complex structure to make it work. But it was kind of the uh, the brainchild of this this teacher of ours, me and Jake, uh, Tom Schatz, 
And so, uh, so they had made one movie, but it was a movie that it was a script that had been floating around Hollywood or like the indie world um, that was directed by somebody, you know, Jamie Babbitt, who is not from Texas. And the writer wasn't from Texas. And they used a few UT students on the film, but it was like not kind of what it was supposed to be. So, so, so now the, those, there was kind of like a directive to make a truly like UT oriented film. So me and Jake found this script that had been written by the, the, this friend of ours. Uh, and I thought it was, it had potential and I like convinced them to let me rewrite it like in one night before I <laughs> sent it to Tom Schatz potentially as the next project that we would do. Um, and, th- and that they would do, and, and they said yes. And so we got to make this film called The Cassidy Kids that Jake directed, that I produced and co-wrote, that had a budget of like half a million dollars. And going from a budget of like, I mean, we shot, we got Deer Pillow in the can for like four grand. <laughs> <laughs> Basically because we just didn't pay anyone. Like, that's how you do it. That's the big secret. Uh, just don't pay anyone. <laughs> <laughs> which you can only do a couple of times. Um, uh, but then suddenly we got to make the Cassidy Kids, which a much bigger budget, and we like built sets at Austin Studios and had you know um, some you know somewhat f- famous actors in it. And but it was just like not. It did not turn out well. Was that um, overwhelming for you, or was that like totally? Was it, was it too big of a jump? Oh or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like I didn't. I didn't even know what an assistant director was. I didn't know why you needed one. Right. Because I was like, why do you need to an assistant director to manage a crew of three people? Because <laughs> that's how big my crews had been up until that point, you know? And so um, so it was it was a, a, a it, it, didn't, it was not a creatively successful project and it was not a personally successful project. And so um, I was like really depressed after that, actually. So it was like 2005 and I was like, fuck, man, like we just blew our big shot. You know, like we hadn't, we didn't like, we got to do this amazing step up in the course of one year, making this tiny little movie to making a much bigger movie. And then it just like got into South by Southwest and nowhere else. And we barely sold it. Uh, Like IFC films, they showed it on, uh, they they bought it, but just to broadcast it a couple of times. And, you know, and so it was was a real downer. (laughs) And then, uh, so then I basically decided I wanted to go back to the old model of, of how I made Dear Pillow and just like, I'm gonna write something and I'm not gonna tell anyone about it except people that I want to help me do it. Like, I'm not gonna try to send it to any agents or managers, like, fuck that, like, I'm just gonna like, write it to make it and write it around available resources. And so one of the available resources was Chris Dubeck, so I wrote the part for him. Was that, hold on a second, was that yeah. choice because you feel like it, all those people, uh, clouded the process or or they just slowed it down okay you know it was like i was tired as i still am (laughs) tired of like asking for permission from people to make it you know or like thinking like oh i gotta like you know if this person if this producer if this manager if this agent if this actor says yes then we can make it you know it's like no 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 you put the making of it first and then it's like who wants to come along on the ride Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. rather than like I'm not allowed to get the train started until these people say yes you know that's Mm -hmm. huge yeah yeah and so that's what keeps it sitting there I feel like too for so long yeah exactly yeah yeah and I've I've done that like I've written plenty of scripts that have just sat there you know or it's like I, I like or I got feedback from people who maybe could help me and it was like, yeah, maybe if you change that and change that. And I'm like, okay, well, if I do that, or I try to do that and try to change things, and then it's like, it's not even mine anymore. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's it's like I've rewritten it to the point where I can't even remember why I wanted to do, tell the story, you know? It's like writing a script just to have meetings. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like meeting after meeting. Yeah, and like there's a, there's a place for that. Like if you want to like, you know, get on a, a staff writing job on a t- you know, it's like that's what you got to do. You just got to like write stuff to sh- prove that right. you can do it, you Just know? Crank them out. Yeah, and then and 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 that you can adapt to all these different styles and all these different characters and shows and you know, um uh points of view and voices of these other showrunners or something, but I'm I've just I never really wanted to do that, you know, to my financial detriment perhaps, <laughs> you know. Um So you start on Lovers of Hate and yeah. then you write Rudy for Chris. Yes. How did you know Chris? Um I knew him through he was in the Cassidy Kids, actually. Ah. He did a small part in that. 
which so that was but that was a gap of you know we shot that in 2005 and so we didn't shoot lovers until 2009 um but he had been in a couple other films uh short films by friends of mine um uh spencer parsons i think was one of the first people who's um his town based in chicago but he made a crazy short film that i first saw chris in and it was like oh yeah that guy's got something you know yeah and uh uh yeah and then my my girlfriend at the time she had worked with him on a theater piece that i saw um and thought he was great and so i just thought like yeah i <laughs> this dude who takes a shower in a car wash at the beginning of the movie that's chris yeah, yeah. i can see that <laughs> and then just what what journey does this crazy dude go on <laughs> So um, you did the whole script with Chris in mm-hmm. mind. Yeah, and was, yeah, yeah. Was he the only? For that part, yeah. For the creation mm-hmm. of the script? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I kind of knew that he would say yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling that he wasn't going to balk at anything because I was, like, writing a lead part for him. Sure, you know? yeah. Um, did you speak to him before and say, hey, I'm writing something for you? No, or? I think I maybe made, well, really, I mean, honestly, like, what it came, what it boiled down to was, uh, it was like South by Southwest 2007, I think. And it was, and I was hanging out with him and this other guy who's a director, um, very occasionally an actor from New York. Um, and we were, we, it was just the three of us, like, you know, having a drink at the Stephen F. Austin Hotel. And I was just like, you guys could be brothers. Mm. Ooh, what could, it, what could I do if you guys were brothers? Is that what started the, mm-hmm. the train going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then I, took some details from my life <laughs> situations uh, that I had found myself in and just was, you know, kind of plugged them into that, you know, and then just decided how do I, how can I make this worse, you know? <laughs> how can I, like, extrapolate this to disaster, you know, with like these two characters? poop prank? Yeah, yeah. That, I think that, that, uh, that, that gratefully came to me in the writing of it. I was like, oh, yeah. Well, I'll, yeah, that that I'll, I'll get around to what, where that came from, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, and so then, so then in my so so I started writing it for them in my mind, and I think I told them, told both of them that I was doing that. Um, Chris was super excited. This other guy was like, "What? No!" <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, no, you're gonna like it. I'm gonna keep going." Um, and then the uh, uh, the 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 part for for of Diana. Um, I wrote that for another non-actor friend of mine who is a uh, very famous poet now. Um, and not an actor, uh, but I just knew her um, in social circles. And I just, in my mind, as I was writing it, was writing it for her. And I think I did let her know that I was going to, you know, that I was writing this part for her. And she was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an actor. And I'm like, I know, that's fine. That's okay. And so I've I've done that many times throughout my, you know, like you know career of writing is where I, I just I just use people in my even sometimes I don't even tell them but it's just helpful to, for me to like imagine a certain person that I know whose personality that I know putting them in those situations it just helps so that's They're, part of your writing process yeah like it's being like, able to use someone in your real life to yeah, create a character yeah and a lot of times it, it is me not that I would ever put myself in a movie because I've done that once and didn't like it um but it's just a way it's a way to 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 imagine it other than it's like takes them out of just the stick figure kind of like you know or the totally abstract idea of this character it's like oh no it's like this person as that character you know it's like just putting a face on this do you get yeah. super attached to it i mean could someone else other than chris have played rudy i mean i yeah i think so but i i also felt like they would not have been as good. And I think if he had said no for some reason, I would have tried my best, especially for him to convince him to do it. Mm-hmm. Whereas I did with those other two people, they said no pretty quickly after I sent him the script, <laughs> um, partially because of all the sex and nudity in it. Um, uh, you know, that's fine. I, I, I get it. Uh, uh, and 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 then I, yeah. For, so for them, I kind of pretty easily moved on to, to figuring out who else could do it, you know, but because, yeah, Chris was sort of like the fulcrum for the whole thing. And so when did um, casting actually come into play? So basically I 
My second idea after this first person who said no for the Diana character was actually the director, Lynn Sheldon, um, who I knew a little bit uh, um, just through, you know, having movies play at festivals around the same time. Um, and so, and she had done a little bit of acting. I had seen her acting and I thought, I thought she was, you know, um, she was really good. She had something, some sort of like natural quality. And so I asked her, uh, if she would be willing to do it. She's based in Seattle and she was like open to it, but she, she was just finishing up her movie Baghead, which played at, uh, or no, not Baghead, uh, Hump Day. Um, which played at Sundance and was this like sort of sensation at Sundance in like 2009, I guess it was January of 2009. And so she was maybe going to do it. She basically said like, if my movie gets into Sundance, which would happen in January of 2009, which is exactly when we were going to um, uh, shoot the film, she was like, I, I wouldn't be able to do it, you know? And, and it did, it got into to, to Sundance and then s sold to, Sony Pictures Classics and was like a you know one of the three three four movies that everybody was talking about that year um which then was then we shot it right after yeah. <laughs> then we shot our film like literally the week after <laughs> did you avoid sort of like the casting process or like thinking in, tr in a traditional way just because that was the path of least resistance or that was just it was like... more it was more that I I felt like because I wrote it for Chris and he said yes and then with um the uh, the part of Paul that Al Karpovsky played, I saw him in my friend Andrew Bajalski's movie called Beeswax. Um, and I actually had a scene with him. I acted in that movie. I was in like two scenes and he was my scene partner. Um, and I just, I thought like, okay, well he could do this. Cause like, this is close to sort of <laughs> who he is. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, yes. So then basically it, it fell to, well, we need to find a really amazing actor to play Diana, you know? And so, and so at that point, I think it was like October, November of 2008. And we were going to shoot it in 2009. And basically the, the woman who, um, who owns the the house in park city, uh, that I wrote it for that I wrote the house, wrote, wrote the movie for that house. Um, she said yes. And she said we could have it for like two weeks right after Sundance. So it was like very late January, early February. So I was like, okay, this is our window. We need to find somebody who is going to be great and is available and is willing to fly up to Park City, Utah and get paid nothing and <laughs> make this movie with us. Um, so I reached out to Vicki Boone, who was who I'd worked with um, multiple times um, and really loved. And so she, she brought in um, 25 different um, actors, actresses, to read with Chris, which was great. Like the fact that we... And I don't even think we we didn't even do, I mean, this was pre self tape, you know, and and but I didn't even do initial auditions. It was just like I, I relied on her. Like she's like these are the these twenty five ladies I think would be really good, um, and it was pretty wide range um, uh, of, of of actors, um, and so I got to read all of them with with uh, with Chris there, and I remember like for them it was like a great experience because they're reading with the person who's going to be in it rather than just like you know the casting director or somebody reading the sides and there were several moments with those actors who came in where i could see on their face being like oh this is an audition i'm acting now like yeah. this is like <laughs> i'm doing a scene with this crazy dude <laughs> and he was playing both parts he played he like i had them read a scene with with rudy and with paul too so he, he got to, he got to play which is such a parts great gift yeah to have in the yeah. casting process right yeah for sure i mean i i <clears throat> auditions are <clears throat> i honestly hate like doing them and i because i know that they're so uncomfortable for the actors who are coming in um you know and it's like <sighs> so anything that i can do to make it a little bit easier a little bit more comfortable a little bit more just like authentic yeah or just giving them an opportunity to just, I don't know, break down the kind of barriers or just be like, hey, you're act you know, this is an actor that you're, you know, that you're auditioning with, not just like. Well, not only an actor, really this is the guy you're going to be, pull this is the yeah. you're going to be dancing with this yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I could see them. Yeah. You it's know? a safe space. Like yeah, yeah. And, it, and and I just feel like that their their work is, is so much better. And my experience of it is, is so much better. So it's like, even though they walk in, I know they're not right for the part, 
but I still get a chance to see them act, you know, mm -hmm. and that they get a chance to do it. And it's not like this. Did yeah. a lot of ideas for the the film come from that as far as like, oh, I could this like, did you were you able to take from everybody in the different sort of viewpoints? I mean, like I think I think it was like the I think we did. So we did the first round of auditions and, and you came in for that. I did. I think so. Because <clears throat> then I think we did a, a guess. I remember being Maybe at not. AFS. Oh. In the screening room. Oh. With Alex. Maybe you didn't come in. I don't think for I for the first round, but yeah, but then I did. I flew Alex in, um, because maybe I had seen, or maybe was that callbacks? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So remember. that was yeah. So so the first round was in Vicky's office, I think, um, and then the second round was at the Austin Film Society where I worked at the time. <clears throat> they had this screening room that I just used, <laughs> and this building that we used for our, our rehearsals and stuff. I just totally made use of all of the uh, the resources they had. Um, <clears throat> and uh, um, yeah, so we did the first initial round of, of auditions and I think it came down to like three ladies, I think. And then we and then I flew Alex back in so that he could read with for the callback, read with these three actors and uh, Chris. So we did like, you know, a kind of, you know, multiple scenes, I think, because I think we probably did like the dinner scene and one with Paul and one with Rudy. Um, for all three of these ladies and then I think it came down to two and then I had like got together with you and this one other actress just for a drink just to like sort of talk about the the part a little bit more and uh yeah I mean and it was like I mean I already you know could tell from the work that I'd seen you do before and then what you did in the in the audition and the callbacks that you would bring so much more to it but then I think the 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 in-person meeting that we had where you're, it was clear that you were willing to <clears throat> be away from your child for the very first time <laughs> <clears throat> to come up to Utah with a bunch of strangers right. and make this movie and live in the same house where we're making it. And that, that actually that's not, that seemed like something that was not just like fun for you, but like essential, Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that like you totally. needed to do it almost as much as, or more than I did, you know? That's interesting that you got that. <clears throat> yeah. I would say that that is absolutely true. Yeah, and but so and so that, whereas the other actress who I met with, like it was, you know, she also would have brought something completely different to it. But I think it just wasn't it wasn't clear that she cared about it as much as I did, you know, or even like it seemed like it was something that she thought was would be fun, you know, but not like I have to do this life or death, you know, maybe. right, <laughs> right, and so. <clears throat> it was pretty, I mean, you know, I kind of knew even before we had that, those last, those last two meetings, it was, it was more just like, Oh, I got to do my due diligence. Mostly because it's like you and I had not had a chance to actually talk outside of the realm of an audition That's or true. the callback. I think maybe we'd emailed a little bit, but like, as far as just having a chance to, you know, have a one-on-one, -on -one, just you and I yeah. talking about the movie and life and you know, what our ambitions are and just, you know, whatever, just getting his chance yeah. to, to know because that was the other part of it is that, like, we're gonna be fucking living in that house. We're yeah. gonna be like, we're gonna essentially snow ourselves in for two weeks in this house and, like, is deal that, with heavy is, stuff. Yeah, yeah, deal with like really, you know, intimate, yeah. heavy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And that's the first shit that we did. Yeah. The first day was like, that was the first day, wasn't it? Yeah, get naked. <laughs> that was that yeah. was the first day. Yeah. So hang on, a couple things. How did did you know Chris? Did <laughs> right. you know anybody? I, was just gonna or? Ask that, yeah. I didn't know any of these people. I was okay. like beforehand. Yeah. I didn't know I, any you guys, of these people. You. Okay. No, no. I I, I, yeah, I no. basically was on a separate journey where I had been living in LA with my husband mm -hmm. and we had been married about ten years and the writers were about to go on strike and we always knew we wanted to have kids and I was like, you know what? If we're gonna do that, we should probably do that now. Mm -hmm. So I got pregnant, and then we moved back home to Austin mm -hmm. when I was, like, six months pregnant. And then I had my baby. Yeah. And then I just I, – I honestly think that your audition was the first audition I had done oh, wow. since I became a mother. Wow. Mm. And I think Harper was a toddler, maybe? Two, No, maybe? Harper was – One. She wasn't she was even one, one yet. We, yeah. When because we, she started walking. Yeah. In, just right before she got to the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Darren brought her up there for the um, 
We were, so we, we missed weekend. the first round. Okay. I don't remember the first round. I think yeah, it must have been that I because I, I I I was like whoa. Leatherface's sister? Oh, God. Is that what you thought? Yes. She sounds perfect. Let's get her in here. Well, because I saw, because I, because I, because I was like, I saw, because I remember seeing that movie, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. It, like when it came out, I went, I, I like <laughs> spent like a whole day in, I was in Houston and I had like a, a day where I was, didn't really like to do anything. So I just literally went to a movie theater and like saw like three movies. <laughs> and that was one of them. And I was coming in, I was like, remaking Texas Chance was gonna be dumb. <laughs> Believe me, I felt the same way. Yeah. But then like, you know, it's like pretty good. And then like you show up and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> what is that? That lady <laughs> that lady's scary as hell. Uh, <laughs> and uh and then afterwards when Vicky, you know, I think, you know, presented like you were one of the twenty five people that that you um that she sort of uh uh you know laid out as like these are the people that I think would be really good that you should definitely see. Um, and I think, yeah, you weren't available maybe I for that first round. I think there was a thing where my agent was telling you no because it had mm -hmm. nudity in the right, breakdown. Right. Yeah. And I didn't even know that. Yeah. And then somehow he came to me and he was like, uh, this guy keeps asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've been telling them no because of the nudity. Right. But, and I was like, well, who is it? What is it? And I was yeah. like, well, let me see it. Yeah, yeah. And... So my, that was sort of like, I hadn't done anything in a while. Right. And I was in a weird mm -hmm. place. Yeah. And so like your audition was actually one of those ones that I will remember forever. It was cool. kind of my living in oblivion moment where mm. we got in the room. Yeah. And I was doing my professional actor things yeah, that yeah. I know how to do. Yeah, yeah. And we did it twice. Yeah. And I was going to leave. And I could tell that you guys were like, that's great. Thanks yeah, yeah. for coming in. Right, right. But Which is also, code, it was code for what? <laughs> it felt a little bit like I didn't, didn't yeah. deliver. Yeah, oh. yeah. I didn't give them what I know I can. Oh. And so, as I was about to walk out, I was like, mm. "No, you know what? I think we. I want to do this again." Oh. And I said, because she mm. should feel bad. Mm. <laughs> like basically, she should feel something. Right, right, right. right. And I tapped into something very real that was going oh, wow. on with me at that moment, and yeah. I just sort of like gave it to Alex. And yeah. That felt so much better. Right, and right. And then, I don't know, there was a different reaction from you guys. And then I was like, okay, I can leave now. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. Right. So it was kind of like I had to thaw out right, or something right. for a second. Um, yeah. Also new dynamics of being a mom and then being an right. actor. So right. anyway, so yeah. that audition was really powerful for me. I mean, and that I was able to make yeah. that switch in the room. Yeah, yeah. Did you have that ex a different experience? I don't remember that. Yeah. I mean, I think now that you're saying it, I kind of remember it. But I, I think my attitude was like. You know, I think I think she might be the one. Even before, you know, or it was more just like I want to talk to her, you know, yeah, and just like talk through some of the more tricky parts and the intimate parts and all that kind of stuff, and, and just like explain sort of why I want to have that stuff in there, you know. Yeah, and that's the thing I think, Kendra, we were talking about last show, mm -hmm. mm. where that now that we're doing so much on tape. Mm. that's sort of missing. Right. Yeah. Is yeah. that yeah. maybe yeah. in the room right. you were, you know, 50% more interested in me as the three-dimensional person right. than just as in the performance I gave you as Diana. Yeah. And that yeah. It takes also, it a step further. It also yeah. sounds like you wanted to defend your sort of like why you needed this stuff in there. Like yeah. you were so, like yeah. insecure, self-conscious about like, you know, I'm not just doing this to exploit you. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it was, you know, because I, I, I mean... With the meeting that I had with the other actress, I think she was a little bit not sure, you know, I guess, or just like, you know, uh, yeah, didn't, I, I guess, didn't understand why it was important, you know? And it's like, hey, could the movie have been done without that stuff, without the nudity and stuff? Like, sure, but it would not have been as raw an experience for the audience, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, and the, the, the key for me and, in in writing it and thinking about it was that like all of the sex and the nudity or all of the nudity and stuff happens at it does it's not in a sexual context actually it's like you don't see well I mean it is <laughs> but but it's like it's it, it, it's, it's I mean, say, I'm, 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 thinking, I mean I'm thinking in the in the the pictures and stuff but it was but my my intention was not to shoot anything resembling a a, a normal sex scene you yeah, know yeah, yeah. it's like the actual sex scenes that all all happen off camera right. yeah, yeah. Right. or it's like more about 
Rudy hearing it. He yeah. knows that you hear it rather than see it. Which is super and then, powerful. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that, and that, so, so that, and then that was really important to me to get, kind of get at that, like, this is how intimate these people, these two people who've been sort of circling each other for so many years finally get, you know, when they think that they're alone. <laughs> But well, then what that does to yeah to him and then you know to basically make the audience feel as kind of like you know uh uh sort of you know humiliated as he, he does but then also for her too when she sort of like finds out that oh my god like the whole time you knew oh my god because I, I was on edge the whole <laughs> yeah. time i was like what the? <laughs> that intimacy was so powerful it yeah was such a powerful tool yeah like, yeah, yeah. 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 Like it's super important. That he's just there hiding. Yeah, in the right. Shadows. Like, yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. I lose. Like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and I will say that, like, though I understand you feeling like you needed to uh, defend that yeah, yeah, or explain yeah. it or whatever. I think it actually was already in the strength of the writing of the whole piece yeah. because I knew that already, right, or right. I wouldn't have been there. Yeah, and 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 that was a big part of like having a chance to talk to you about it is to understand that you know, and that yeah. that. That actually most of I think what we talked about was just like personal stuff. Yeah, it was just like what's what's going on with us and like how and maybe how it connects to this movie, but like not even that, you know. And because it's like I don't know for me, it's like you know, so far with like the movies that I've made, like my goal is always like I want to I want when this is over for us to be a family, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like like. Uh, you know, small shoots, you know, where it's like two days or something. Uh, maybe it's just not as as important. But like for the features stuff that I've made, it's like I want us to feel like we're we're a family now because we, are, we literally are going through something like that in, involves trauma because you're just like racing constantly to like get it all done and that everybody has to like contribute in their parts. And there's always all these problems, you know, and so it's always this sort of like traumatic experience and my feeling always is just like I want the people that I chose that I have the power to choose to go along with this to be people that I want to be in my family like down the road you know for years to come you know I, I kind of feel like what we've learned so far in the last couple of sessions is just that it is important who the person is and not just the yeah. performance oh yeah it seems like your decision came down to that like that's how you and ultimately yeah. cast it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, gobs of talent just oozing out of her well, ears. There's that a qualification, too. right? There's a qualification <laughs> yes, of like, okay, exactly. they're yeah, good yeah, at their craft. Yeah, yeah. It's like, are they going to be able to execute? Are they going to be, be able to create the character? Are they skilled? All those kind of things. But then, you know, there are a lot of actors who are really, really skilled and who can like do the thing and like hit the marks and say the lines and modify it the way that you want them to. But <laughs> do I want them to be in my family? You know, because I've ha I've worked with actors who are fucking amazing, like really good, like skilled technicians of their instrument and their craft. Mm -hmm. But then it's like I don't, I never talk to them. There's after no we connection. Make, you know, and them. like that's fine, that's okay. But that's not really what I want. Like that's not why I'm doing this. You know, and maybe if I worked more, <laughs> if I you know had you know you know, whatever, like, you know, was, was on set more and directed a bunch of TV shows, episodes and stuff like that, you know, like I, I, I would feel differently, but you know, because so many of, 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 of the movies that I have had a chance to make, like I look at them as like they're handmade, you know, and they're like, you know, and, and they're handmade by a bunch of different hands, but I want it to be something that we all are proud of and like, you know, look back on fondly, you know, and and that and that we can connect 14 years later and you know and it still feels totally real and totally important you know so. i think that's yeah i think that's uh the best way yeah <laughs> yeah having been in all the different worlds is definitely yeah and and i think the film reflects that like it still stands the test of time yeah I'm well and i can't uh <laughs> It's inevitable, I think, when your mm -hmm. lead actress is nursing and her baby is <laughs> in Austin while right, she's in right. uh, Utah. Utah. Yeah, yeah. And there were times when I would have to pause filming right. to go pump because <laughs> yeah. my boobs would yeah. be exploding or different yeah. sizes and I would have to yeah. put the milk in the freezer right. and then I mailed it back 
to Darren. Right. Like you that, nailed you, it. that was a real thing that happened. Yeah. I hope you use hot ice. I don't know what we use. I don't know how I we did that. I, I don't remember. I, was not, I didn't make those FedEx runs. <laughs> I mean, I, I just know that, like, I've never had to do that before. Yeah, where but, it was but like, that, you guys had to sit and wait. Yeah. While I had fine. to pump. <laughs> yeah. I, that, that, I mean, clearly you had the job. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. And it was like just getting back to the family No, but it's of, weird because we're all yeah. in this house. Yeah. 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 And we yeah. live yeah. there and yeah. it's the set and yeah. I'm going to go into yeah. this what other bathroom. What a diva. Yeah. <laughs> Can we cut? Because my breasts are leaking. Yeah, you I'm know, sorry. Can we cut? I have to go pump. <laughs> my boobs are getting too big for yeah, this yeah. shot. Yeah. So it's not going to match yeah. what we did earlier. Right. Thank continuity. Because yeah. we didn't have a continuity person. No. You were it. You were the titty continuity. I was the titty continuity. That makes a lot of sense because I was like, damn, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. realize you had just I, said Girl, that. I miss yeah. those boobs. Yeah. <laughs> they were the yeah. best boobs I ever had. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you think, and I know we're we're talking lovers of hate, but I, yeah. I, I'm interested to hear how after mm-hmm. you did Love and Air Sex, or was it Love and, yeah, Love and Air yeah, Sex, yeah, 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 yeah. and how that was, you had trailers oh, and yeah. you had a budget yeah, and you yeah, had yeah. money and then well, that casting process yeah, must have I mean, been. The, I mean, the, the cool thing with that that movie, so it was called The Bounce Back when we shot it and it's it was my first, not my original script. It was written by these two other guys and the script had come to me as something that had been optioned by this producer who brought in almost all the money that went to making the movie, which was a lot compared to everything else that I'd done before. So, and that movie has like all the, the you know, it's got much bigger scope got tons of locations we had like a process trailer to drag the cars around and like you know we shot it on sixth street like crazy people a bunch of different clubs around town and restaurants and everything um and i mean i i have to say like that movie was like in a way more fun than lovers of hate i think because lovers of hate was so um was so because it was so intimate and because we had a crew of three people and because we had no money and no lights and like. That's an intensity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were like living there. I mean, I was like, I literally could not get away from the movie yeah. for like two weeks. And then we came back and shot for another week in Austin. But this, um, and this also has like a way bigger cast. Yes, so yes. did you so have big, traditional casting Yeah, so process? for that one, we did, we, we um, so that one, it was like, uh, it's like a romantic comedy. So we were looking to, fill out there's like six lead parts um so it's sort of a a big ensemble and so we tried to do it the cheap way um as producers where you just send out offers to like actors um and so it took us a year to cast that movie because we would get like four people and then one person would drop out and then that would cause another person to drop out or like our dates had to push and then we lost people so we didn't actually work with the casting director until the very end because we had the five leads and they all had some had them secured for like a um, we shot it in uh, May of 2013 no wait 20, 2012 and then uh, and so we basically we knew when we were shooting but there was one major role that we our process of just like sending out offers and stuff was not working so we hired a casting director in uh, LA and so uh, another great thing is that I, or again, it happened where I had the 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 parts. It's like about this this or it's about two couples. One of them broke up, um, and they're not sure if they did the right thing. One of them, the other one, broke up, and they want to like destroy each other. And so the um, uh, the the woman in that in that pair uh, was played by Sarah Paxton, um, who was my first time working with her, but she was amazing. And so she was cast, and so I got to go out to L.A. and read a bunch of guys with her. So I think we read, like, maybe six or seven um, different actors. And uh, and the guy who ended up getting the part was this guy, Zach Kreger, who um, up until that point he had mostly been known for be- having this comedy troupe uh, called The Whitest Kids You Know that was on IFC. And uh, he was a director, too, um, but he... Uh, uh, he came in and was basically like, I don't think I'm the right guy for this part. And Sarah was like, who the fuck is this guy in her mind? She's like, what? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I was like, because do you want it to be like this like dude bro kind of like asshole thing? Because I just don't think I can really do that. If you want me to do that, I, I just want, I'm not going to read <laughs> today, um, but I wanted to talk to you and ask you some questions about this. And if you want me to read it, I can come in tomorrow and do that and I can prepare. 
And so Sarah was just like, this fucking asshole. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, tell me more. <laughs> You're, you intrigue me. You're hired. Yeah, a guy <laughs> yeah. who rejects the right. role. Yeah, the audacity. Yeah, I you. know. But part of it was because okay, this guy had a sketch comedy show for like six years. Like, I'm going to be able to learn some stuff about comedy from this guy, you know? And I had seen his work, so just like, you know, his reel and stuff, um, and, and thought it was good. And so, and, and, and so I, yeah, I had him come in the next day. Um, and he did a great audition. He was super funny. And uh, Sarah still was just like, this dick. And I was like, I think he might be the one. Yeah. She's just, <laughs> you, okay. The dynamic's but, already there. <laughs> yeah, but she but she sort of kept it in check. But uh, they, they, they came to Austin. We had an amazing time. Uh, they started dating like two or three months after we sh the shoot. And then they got married. Holy sh... They got married like just three years ago. Oh, my in God. In Austin. Because that's where they met. Interesting. So okay, I'm, so I, I want to get happen. really specific. You made that happen. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I want to get really specific about this process. So yeah. you and your producer, how are you? You're just going out to people. Why did you not hire a casting director to Because do that for he you? did not want to spend the money. On the casting director. Yes. Okay. So he was like, we can do some of this ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. You... And they're they're going after because because we were going after like not like Huge names, you know. Did you like, just oh, come up with this right. list, huh? That's what I'm saying. Were these the offers? Were there people you already worked with that you knew, no. or someone you inspired to they're, work they're, with? They were people who, you know, it was like, I mean, I, I know. Was it, was it was it finance based? Like, was he he basing it off of like, kind of? Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, really what it was is that he went to the agencies, like he went to like CA and WME and stuff, and was like, you know, send them the script. They covered it. They're like, these are our actors from our like stable who we think would be right for it. And then he would just be like, oh, they're, he's good, he's good, he's good. Or I would be like, oh, yeah, I know that person. So the, they're the good. big they'd agencies, be awesome. they responded to you guys. They mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you weren't nervous about that? Like just choosing somebody out of like... Well, it was it was like I, I wanted to talk to them. Like, And, and that's the thing is like, I didn't really even want them to audition because it's like, because I don't really like doing auditions. Like it's not, I don't think it's a, a the best way to gauge. Yeah. What somebody's capable of, you know, I agree 100%. you know, and but I will say that having a personal conversation with somebody definitely tells me, you know, like like I will be able to tell if it's somebody who I don't think gets it or that I want to hang around with, you know, <laughs> you know, or or it's or the the that you know, or if I don't feel like they're sincere in like what they. You know, like, I don't know, sometimes, you know, it's like I've had I've had those. So that's what we would do is we would do video chat. So it would be like, you know, some some actor would would express an interest in the script. And then we would do I would like do a video chat with them like me. Sometimes it was just me. Sometimes it was me and um, the, the uh, Megan Gilbride, the other producer. Um, and then we would get a read on them, whether or not they would be good, whether or not it would be a, a good fit and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, but it was just it was an exhausting process because it was like. So much of it was just waiting, waiting to have the person read the script, right. respond to it, yes, no. And then, you know, our other producer, he just, I don't know, he would get like super excited about somebody being in the part. Like like this one guy uh, who's fucking awesome. I, lo I love him, Jason Mantzoukas. Do you know him? He's a comedian guy. But he was just like way too old for the part, you know? And like he, and he knew it too. <laughs> like when we met with him, you know, he was just like, yeah, I don't know, how, are they, how old are these people? They're like in their late <laughs> mid twenties or something, and he's like, you know, forty. <laughs> right. Just like, and then, tr but but our producer was just like, oh man, he's so funny, he'd be so great. And I'm like, then we have to change the entire script, or yeah. then we have to like recast everybody older if you really want him to be in it. Like, is it just gonna look weird if it's yeah. like this guy in his forties, like you know, just kicking with all these like late twenty year old, and they're all supposed to be the same age? Yeah, I don't know. It was just. I guess my question is, yeah. when, okay, because I, you know, as an actor, I, I get the whole audition process. Yeah. It's very annoying. I yeah. think on both ends. I mean, on one end, as an actor, you're like, yeah, I finally get to do something. I can show. Right. You know, but yeah. you, you you always walk out never knowing. But um, <clears throat> the risk of not auditioning, like, are you doing mm. any type of research of this actor before you're sending yeah. out the uh, offer? Like, what? Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, like, the... like, I think the way that, if I'm remembering it right, it would be like, we get a list of like 20 actors for like one or two roles, you know, that were kind of similar, you know, like the dudes in their twenties or something. And so I would go through and I would like do research on them, look at their credits, try to find some 
tape on them, whether it's a reel or just like watch a, an episode of a show with them. And that list is based on probably your guys' budget, what you guys can afford, yeah, availability. Yeah, because I think that, you know, the, the, this, the agencies knew that we were not, we were basically paying scale at whatever ultra low, uh, the low budget scale mm-hmm. or whatever it was, you know? And that was the way we were, we, the only way we could really do it because we had so many lead actors, you know, in that, in those, we had six leads to, to the, everybody had to get paid the same. You know, we couldn't have, yeah, it would have to be the most. So you're already most you're, you're in a sandbox that you yes, can play. Yes, exactly. In. But was yeah, anybody yeah. telling you you had to have names necessarily? I mean, I think the un- the understanding based on Trace, our producer, who you know most of the money was coming from him, was that try to get the most famous people that we can at the price that we can afford, which is scale plus ten or whatever. You know, um, for whatever agreement we were doing. Well, I mean, it was, they were, all the agreements were different back then, of course, but. Uh, it wasn't a lot, you know, they weren't going to be doing it for the money. You know, it was going to be whatever, you know, two grand a week or something. Um, and that's also based on the previous films of what you've done. So it's kind of on your shoulders and your talent for you yeah. for, to sell like, hey, this guy's got something you want to you want to work with him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was just like, I don't want it to, uh, you know, I don't want to just put somebody in there because they're kind of famous. I I, I, I use this term fame ish. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like oh, like like face recognition. That guy from that girl from you know. Yeah. So it's not it, because like that that I think in my mind it's like well one of the things that I discovered that some of my friends who've had some more success in the industry tried to explain to me and I just sort of like eh, <laughs> whatever uh, was that for that genre for a romantic comedy people don't want unknowns. You know, it's like they you don't. Right. That's you, you know, it's like. Other genres, horror films, don't really care. You know, it's like that's cool if there's a famous person in it or somebody they recognize from something. But sometimes it's actually better if there isn't, you know, because then you have that sort of like suspension of disbelief and you're more worried that maybe this person's not going to make it through the movie because they're not famous, you know? Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. You know? I mean, it's true. Why yeah. is that? As he's saying, I'm thinking about it too. When I'm yeah. thinking about romantic comics, mm-hmm. why is that? I mean, I th- I think John's it's because got nothing because you got because you you want you <laughs> oh, want. I mean, something. I got a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. That's what we're here but for. But it's like you want to you want to see Matthew McConaughey f- maybe fall in or not fall in. You know, it's like you want to see that person do it. You do know, that. whereas but when it's a per- not a celebrity, it's yeah, you're like, not as in- emotionally invested. Perhaps maybe I don't know. I mean, it's the same know. reason it's hard to do for Matthew. It was hard for him to get out of those. Right, because mm-hmm. nobody wanted to see him. They couldn't do see him anymore. Yeah. yeah. So and then so he did a uh, financing. Killer always, Joe. Yeah, financing is always <laughs> like oh, you want always like well, that, want they always want to pigeonhole you in what you do, and they they don't want. to... No, but that's an interesting element of because, that. Well, think about we it. We want to see famous people do romantic comedy because mm-hmm. I remember growing up, Freddie Prince Jr. was the oh yeah right. right? And yeah, I, yeah, think yeah. About, I don't think I've ever seen him out of that yeah. role. Yeah. And I just saw him recently on a. Christmas Netflix series this right. past year right. it's another still, romantic still comedy right. and I was like damn like he's right. what almost 40 50 something yeah. and he's still stuck in that role I mean yeah. it happens to all of us it, the directors they can only do horror right. I mean it happens they, they won't well and why do you have to be versatile <laughs> <laughs> I mean you can typecast me all day if I yeah, keep yeah. working yeah <laughs> that's where I'm at now yeah. <laughs> like uh, also I mean I guess one. that's true because I'm, <laughs> I mean I started on stage Mm. These big dramatic roles. Right. And then when I switched to TV and commercial stuff, I kept getting comedy. I never saw myself as a comedic right, actress. Right. But everyone kept saying you're funny. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not funny. Yeah, yeah. But I guess I am. <laughs> right? I like and that's what I get. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, but I'm grateful. Right. And, if Vicky I and all mean, them at this me, stage of my like, life, I'll, I'll take it. I'll yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. You want me to play? You know? Yeah. Moms at the same all time, day. I'm like, if I don't have to sit there and sob cry all day, <laughs> right. fine. Yeah. Right. yeah. I don't. I don't have to use that energy. I once yeah. defended Robert De Niro for that very reason because my husband was like, "What is he doing?" And I'm like. He's a grandpa. Right. Maybe he wants to go to Fiji to make this rom com <laughs> right. and not have to be like, yeah. you know, yeah. shooting and bloody and everything. He's tired. Yeah. He just needs but to some work. Of his, some of like, his younger films when he was young, he's actually kind of, he's Robert De Niro. Like, he's pretty funny in some of those films. But, oh, yeah. But yeah, I'm yeah. saying, like, you can't, like, do the, you know, the really hard, pivotal stuff all day all long. The time. I was yeah. like, cut yeah. him some slack. You, need to change. you yeah. know, at some point, he's not going to, like, 
carry the yeah. films of a generation like, forever. Maybe. Or they just changed their life priorities. Like at a certain point, yeah. Ice Cube just started making right. kids movies. Yeah. It's like, right. you know, and it's like, do, do, do the, Ice do the kids started who, selling canes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a cop for how many years? Oh, yeah. that's true. I know. That's also, right. Yeah. But also, Mr. too, there's a whole new generation that discover them for who they are. Right. right. So there's a lot of people, when you mention Taxi Driver, they're like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. know him from, yeah. from this. Yeah. Oh, you, you know? mean yeah. that show with uh, Danny DeVito? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Funny yeah. Show. Well, even then, yeah. they wouldn't know what that yeah, show exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. definitely wouldn't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So. So you, it, you weren't getting the joy out of sending these offers and so at some no. point well, somebody and it was all, says you yeah. need a casting director yeah and it was also just like getting to the point where the time that it took to 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 if it was one role right it would have been worth it just keep going back and right. back and back right but it was like six roles and so the the the, the pieces of the puzzle kept falling you know it's like because right. we came close to shooting it in February of 2012 I think and then this one actress who was the first person who had been committed to it even before I got the script, she finally was like, actually, never mind. Oh. Mm. And then and, and then we were like a month away from shooting. And so then the whole thing fell apart. And some of the actors who we who I had gotten on board, like their agents were telling them that movie's dead. Oh. Move on. And that made me be like, fuck that. No, man. Not dead. Or better offer, make better offers come in and yes, and, and, yeah, 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 and that's basically how Sarah, uh, Sarah Paxson, who let's say he had a bad offer, just like the, uh, Marvel movie or something, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that no, no, they, them yeah, into, it's like they other, you know, whatever. It's like they're there's they they have to manage their own stuff, you yeah. know, and I, I I didn't have any ill will because Sarah, who is somebody who me and um, Megan, the producer, met with. You know, so we didn't, we didn't, you know, she'd done an audition for us. We just met with her in LA. But the only part that was available was not, would not really be a good fit for her. But then when that other actress who had been committed from the very beginning dropped out, we put Sarah, we were like, Sarah, you're cast and you get to be the role that we really wanted you to be in anyway. So it's actually the best thing that happened for the movie that that actress dropped out and we had to push our date so that then Sarah could do, do it. And she was, you know, it's like one of. I just see your, still, ca your casting board, like. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, it was it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. It's like literally took a year to do that, and I was working on other stuff, writing other scripts, and making other movies. You know, and you know, but but it was always in the background, and it was always in the background. Honestly, is something is like I don't know if this is ever going to happen. Yeah, and because so of this kind of ridiculous way that we're trying to make it happen by not just hiring. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, Trace, can we just can we just spend the money? Do you feel and like having a casting, casting director? Yeah, yeah. And so then at least what to went, help us find this one role. What went differently role. when you had the right. casting director? So, so yeah, well, because we only had one role to cast. Um, and so, uh, and I was able to have Sarah read with those guys, and that's how we met Zach, and that's how we got into it. Yeah, so so we went. Out, I went out to L.A. Um, for, like, a long weekend, and we, yeah, I met, met you know, we had, like, so, that, so those were auditions. They were in, in the room auditions, but it was them reading with her scenes that, they would actually be playing with her. Um, did, did you also have any insecurities from the UT film where it was a bigger budget? Now you're going to this next level. Yeah, to, yeah, to some degree. Um, but I think because I had gone through that experience and I had actually had a chance to learn from that experience because I didn't direct that movie. I didn't direct Cassidy Kids, I, but I was there on set every day um, and was able to see like how like the machine. Because that's the thing is like on a big movie set when you got forty people on the crew, it's like you can't be nimble, you right. know? It's like, you gotta, if you come to the day with like a whole new idea and we're gonna shoot this whole other scene that I just wrote yesterday, it's like, you are just screwing everything up yeah, and you are wasting a bunch of time, you know? <laughs> um, and Within reason, you know, it's like, there's there's a, a bit of, I got to sort of have a chance to sort of see what the, the margins were, it's like where you could be nimble, but still keep things on track. And so, um, so yeah, I felt like I, I got that opportunity. So what was a depressing sort of experience? Yeah, yeah. Led to this. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it I was think that's important. For yeah, people to and hear. it was one where like like I was, you know, intimately involved in like, um, you know, I was just like really prepared, and that's one of the things that I've come to recognize over the years is just like there's, as a director, there's literally no such thing as being too prepared, you know. Mm -hmm. Which is not to mean that you have to you know, Alfred Hitchcock it and like 
just storyboard everything out and just execute it exactly the way that you had it in your mind. But if you come to it without, if you come to the day without a plan, then you are going to be wasting time coming up with a plan. And you're not going to be able to like think through the scene or think through the day and be like, oh, well, if we, we prioritize these shots, these like seven or eight shots, and then these, you know, three to four shots, if we have to leave them, we can leave them, you know? Maybe th those are great to have, not have to have, you know? And if you don't come to the day with that sort of like mental sort of, you know, hierarchy, then you're going to be totally scrambling, you know? And, and, and if the, and if the, if the crew and the cast like can tell that you are like foundering, mm -hmm. like it is a, cause I've had that experience <laughs> and it is literally the worst. It's poison. Yeah. 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 If like, and, and it's not that they, because what they'll do is they'll come to you with ideas because they want to help, you know, like nobody's, mm -hmm. I never had a set where anybody's like actively trying to sabotage me, <laughs> but what they're, their, their attempt to help sometimes can be sabotaging because then it just like clouds mm -hmm. your mind, you know, it's, uh, yeah. It's House like, of cards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah. Like I, I directed a pilot for, uh, uh, for comedy central, um, that was, that was, we shot it in Atlanta. And so that was not my script something that I came to it very, very late in the process. Most of the casting had already been done. Um, and it, I, I was just going through a very difficult time <laughs> personally. Um, and I, I, I had that experience of being like, oh my God, like we would finish a take and they would be like, do you want to go again? And I'd be like, in my mind, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> wow. I don't know if it was good or not. Like there was so much going on in my head that I was not able to actually focus on whether or not we got the scene. Mm -hmm. So I would just say, yeah, let's go again. <laughs> Cause I would just be so like, as far as casting I don't know, goes, two, two takes like, is better than one. I don't know. You just showed up on the day and these people were already No, for, for, for that, for that particular project, it was again, an, it was a, an ensemble piece. It was like a, a, you know, a pilot for a series. It was going to be about five young people who all like worked at the same co-working space and all had their own weird jobs and you know shenanigans that they got up to um so i think four out of the five had already been cast um and i got to weigh in on the casting of one of the five like that it was like the last guy i left but as far as the ones that had already been cast i mean did they just start acting on the day and you're like oh i guess no, this I, is I, got they, they I got a chance i got a chance i got it i went out to la um because we were gonna shoot in atlanta but they were all based in la so i actually went out to la um, maybe two weeks before we shot, uh, to meet with each one of them individually. So we, and then when we got to to, to Atlanta, we had like a day of rehearsals. Oh, I think, right. yeah, maybe one and a half days of rehearsals, um, which was not as fruitful as I wanted it to be, just because I was just in a bad place. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I think um, TV lends itself to they're like it sort of lends itself yeah. to creating yeah, machines no, and yeah, yeah and there and, and everybody was just like. Rehearsal? Yeah. What? We get to rehearse? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like in their mind, they were like, "Why?" Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, and I'll, yeah, but uh, yeah, and and I tried to 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 do my best to kind of you know make it helpful. But um, did it feel less? I mean, did you feel in any way less less connected to them because you didn't? Oh yeah. Seek them out. Mm -hmm. You didn't cast them. Yeah. I mean, they were they're all good actors, you know, and like they all had really good credits and stuff and. I got to watch a bunch of their stuff before we worked together and got to chat with them and get to know them a little bit in, in person. Um, but, but yeah, it was not, I mean, you know, it, it wasn't even my script. Like it was, it was, I came in as like a, like literally I got Director hired. Hire. I got, I heard about the project in early October. Um, they hired me in the a week into October. We shot it in early November. I delivered my, director's cut of the pilot uh, before Thanksgiving, and then it was out of my life. Wow. Which is so different from every other project that, that I've done. Do. Yeah. Because it sounds yeah. like from you, like, uh, from what I, correct me if I'm wrong, from what I'm getting, is like you like to connect with your cast yeah. before you even start. Yeah, filming. for so sure. So to just jump into yeah. the project and you didn't, you weren't there from the beginning, mm -hmm. kind of threw you maybe, what whatever else you had going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was mostly the personal stuff that I had going on, but, but the, the, the 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 issue one of the is other issues was that of everyone on the set the actors the crew i i knew one person yeah and everyone else 
was a stranger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I got to have like a couple meeting, you know, like in the course of a meeting, I got to talk to them a little bit. Maybe a lunch. Like I think the AD, I got to have got to have lunch with him before before we went there. But they also all of them had been working in the TV world for like years, mm-hmm. you know, and like they are used to that pace. They are used to that. Someone what, new comes in. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're used to directors just kind of coming in, move the camera there, shoot there, blah, 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 you know, and like that's, you know, they just move on. And I'm just like, oh, can we be friends? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even, yeah. I get that. It's, yeah. That's very yeah. much the yeah. world a working actor well, lives yeah. in. It's yeah. like yeah, every sure. project essentially up. is yeah. like first yeah, 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 day at school. Yeah. Yeah. And who yeah. likes the here's first day trailer, at school? Here's your trailer. Here's your clothes. Go to makeup. Here's your lover. And then um, here's or your if child. Even that. <laughs> oh, yeah. If, or yeah, if we even that. Yeah, we don't always get that. Well, a lot of times you show up and I find my name on the Honey Wagon or trailer. I was going to say trailer. Yeah. You guys got trained. Well, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, about yeah, all I get is I find my name. Yeah, find and then somebody will knock on my door and say, this right. is what we're doing. Right. And then we go. But essentially, it's like you don't know anybody yeah. over and yeah. over and over again. Yeah. You're the new kid at school. Look, yeah. here's your daughter. You so never it's hard to be comfortable. Because that's happened to me. And yeah. I'm like, hi. <laughs> and she's like, are you playing my mom? Yes. yes. You know, it's like. Yes. Whereas, like, I will say. Are you a nice mommy right, or a mean mommy? You? What kind of mommy Yeah. With Lovers of Hate, we had this incredible, like, three-week rehearsal period oh, yeah. that was just even unheard of to oh, me yeah. and um the red building at austin studios mm-hmm. was not built out yet yeah and it so empty. it was just basically abandoned yeah and we got free reign space. to go in there yeah well, we played uh, how do you guys play hide we and played seek? hide and seek like brian had all these great <laughs> you games. played hide and seek at the red yes. building yeah because yes. like you know rudy's hiding yeah. blah, blah, blah. so yeah. it was like i mean we just were all over that yeah. building doing crazy so you got to really build a yes. relationship yeah. with oh, yeah. each other which yeah. makes yes. filming a lot easier oh yeah i mean so helpful for me because i didn't know any of yes. especially for uh, for an actor, mm-hmm. right? It's like when you're training in class and you have a scene partner for a month. So you right. have that whole right. month. So by the time each week the scene pr- progressively gets better, yeah. yeah, I've been with them all month. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Versus yeah. it's like, hi, here's your husband. Oh, yeah. right, hi. right. Hi, I mean, honey. I think it shows, <laughs> yeah, I think it shows in how the films, stand, right? You know how yeah. great it is. And yeah, how, right. yeah, yeah. And how it is, you guys gave birth to this right. thing that now lives in the world that people can discover and it's right. impactful to people and it yeah you know yeah i mean i i can't tell you an episode of this or you know right yeah and it was you remember a series right but yeah you don't, you don't remember specifically right yeah and, and a big part of it was just like we you know we just didn't have any we, we didn't we had no money to make the movie i mean we d- we did which is a we, positive in a way yes, right. be- but we did I have mean, time and we did build that in and it was like important time, to, right? it was important to me to um to get the to get you know uh, get you on board and cast that role with a couple of months before we shot right so that we had we would have time to do that we would have time right. to, to so that that factored into the whole thing was not just like oh we need to have a diana for you know January 26th when we start shooting, but like we need to have one November 1st so that we can rehearse for like mm-hmm. two months before we get up there because my my attitude was like, because that was the other crazy thing because we had like no lights. We yeah. were relying on the- Daytime sun, hours. The, yeah, oh, the really? daytime hours, but up there in the mountains, yeah. the sun came up at like 8.30 and it went down at like four. Yeah. <laughs> so like our days were like- Short. It's like mm-hmm. six hours. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. had a lot, and actually, that, that was a that became a problem on our very first day when you guys shot the uh, the, the sex scene because oh right uh, because we were running out of light, and we had a different scene like the ending of that scene involved you like crying and like having this whole breakdown after you guys have sex and stuff. Oh yeah, and it was like starting to get blue, you know, like the, the, the there's just no <laughs> there's no daylight left. Yeah, and you know that room had was just like floor to ceiling windows. So yeah. David Lowry, our cinematographer, couldn't do anything because we didn't have any lights. Yeah. So we basically only got half the scene, and you're trying to like emote, like you know, That's right, dredge up all that. this stuff, and then we watched, and so that that felt like those are that was day one. So it felt like kind of a mini disaster. But then I watched the footage, and I basically like rewrote the scene, and we just fit it into the schedule the next day. That's I think. right. That's and right. And then we all got it, and it felt so much better. And that we were able to just like, and then we were off to the race. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it was this weird. The fact that we could be that nimble, you know, and we could be like, okay, well, we're gonna have to literally scrap that entire scene because of the lighting and because honestly, the writing was not good. <laughs> and I just rewrote it that night, and then we shot it the next day, and it was great. 
There's so, so many things like if you now then you're like thinking if we had lights, yeah, mm -hmm. that would have never right exactly yeah. yeah. So if we had money, right? The film might have yeah, yeah 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 or it just it would have been a different yeah film Same. you know yeah. like it would it would have been a little bit brighter there 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 were some scenes when I was watching it last night and I'm like. And David's Did, really going for the dark. Uh, Alex and I at the dinner table. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I think he had a china ball. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. But that was that, about that's it. That's really all we had. And that yeah. was. It's like so saturated. Yeah, yeah. And yeah I remember yeah. we were like, we really. Yeah. We're pushing it with this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or just like like the very at the very end when he finds the, uh, uh, you know the the phone intercom thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. In the garage, and then the car's gone, and then he just like walks out into the snow. It's like everybody's like, "Wow, that's such a cool way that you ended." He's like, walks out into the white, and it's like, no, like it was blown out. Like, yeah. we, just, we couldn't, yeah. we couldn't <laughs> stop it down. So if we wanted to see him in the garage and we wanted to see him out there, it was gonna have to be the same shot. We we're just gonna have to let it go all the white. I and, do remember thinking, like, yeah. "Oh, that's cool." He's yeah, walking yeah. into this like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just like, no, man, because I, I, I think I told David, like, "Yeah, why don't you follow him as he goes out?" And he's like, "Well, it's gonna go." Like, yeah, this will be fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So that film, Diana, was your only true auditions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The other, yeah, Chris, he auditioned in life. That's how I and got like, to know. But, like, you knew Harper yeah. for the little girl. And you oh, yeah, yeah. Zach That's Green true. Yeah, yeah. Deborah's yeah, yeah, son, Zach. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else was people you Kim, knew. Kim LeBlanc. Kim ended up being your wife. Yes. Another I film that I, led I, to yeah, marriage. Yeah, I cast her. It's my life partner after that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and that's and that and that was a cool thing with uh, with um, uh, love and air sex was that so we went through that whole process to get our leads, hired that the casting director to to get that one part to find uh, Zach, but then everyone else, all the other Austin actors, even though it's a big cast, there's a lot of speaking parts. Those are all people that I knew and just asked like you. Oh right. Yeah. Um and and like uh, Ashley Spillers and and Kelly Bland and you know right. all actors that I either worked with before or seen in other stuff, and I was just like, hey, I got this part, you know, do you want to do it? You know, David Zellner, he's the cab driver, you know, just like random. Yeah. So I didn't have to use. That's one great thing about being in the community and knowing so many great actors yeah. in Austin is that I didn't, I just had to go through the mental Rolodex of like, oh yeah, that'd be really good. I and guess. that's your preference as far as casting? Or do you feel <laughs> like mean, having a casting director, or maybe, I guess depends on the size of the project, mm. um, having a casting director, maybe John, you can jump in and confirm, like having yeah. that kind of helps seal the deal for certain projects. I don't know, yeah. like, do you feel like you as even you as a casting director like help an actor and their agent go yes this you need to do this versus like because you know he was saying like on some he gave offers and they would drop you give offers and they drop those are the ones you did one on one like you yeah. did yourself yeah do you feel do either one of you feel like a casting office working on a project helps solidify like this is the actor they're not going anywhere I mean I think you bring there's always this fun game when it comes to finding names right everyone <laughs> creates lists and ideas and you get to just like play with your imagination of like, it'd be great, you know, and then the rubber meets the road and it becomes very difficult, like you said, to find the schedules and then mm -hmm. the, the, they can, af right. you can afford them and all that kind of stuff. I find the process of uh, having the people in the room and, and having the, like, if you actually have the actor, like yeah. that, that seems to be so much more beneficial to yeah. the project yeah. uh, and to the, the craft and the art of making something, yeah. you know, I think it's pretty scary. I mean, you have to, it's scary to be like, I think he's right. Right, you know, like he's done great work. But yeah. That, but again, that's like saying that um, this musician can play any kind of music. And yeah. I think it's tricky, you know. Um, I, 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 I think I do think talking to helps a lot. You mm -hmm. get a sense of the person. You get a yeah. sense of that their energy. <clears throat> and then when it comes to like, I think there's a because you know you see so many actors. There is oh she'd be great for this or you know her you know yeah. that yeah. And, and I feel like uh, I feel like they you know that for the day player stuff like that you know the couple scenes like that can be you know like i would recommend chris or heather for anything i'm like i can i feel like yeah. they could do you know i've yeah. seen it enough and worked with them enough like mm -hmm. i mean you threw me in stuff i will work a project and john go you need an audition for this mm. and then i book it yeah and mm. i didn't even 
luckily on a couple of them mm. i'm like i didn't even originally read for it i don't mm. think my agent told me. Mm. but i got the part you know I, what i mean i feel like i can go through and watch a casting or do a casting and i'm like it's either this this or this these mm. are the three people i think that are you know and you just sort of yeah like, i think that yeah. matches my vision in my head mm -hmm. uh and then it's always interesting to work with the director and to see what they bring and i'm always like we're gonna that guy right <laughs> right Okay, yeah, but right. they see it differently, right. you know, and they're building. Right. What I've what I learned on this last film was they're building a painting. Right. I'm just thinking about the like the one right. paint strokes, right. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. And that really blew my mind. I was like, oh, I never, I never. I, that, now I'm seeing like, oh, we're building a, a painting. Right. There. No, yeah. I will say working with him, it was time, especially since we went virtual, mm. right? Because normally I'm on the outside, they are in the room, they close the door, they're discussing. I might maybe hear from earshot. Yeah. But one time he was like, you should listen and see how it works. And they opened up my eyes and I realized, because mm. I we were, you know, talking, saying, oh, this guy's good. And they don't yeah. go with it. And I'm like, yeah. what? He's like, stop. We can't say anything. But I'm like really <laughs> yeah. digging into him. And he's like, no, no, no. And then when you see the whole thing, you're like, oh. Yeah. Sometimes. And sometimes you're like, and oh. Some, yeah. And some, yeah. You know, sometimes right. I bet Wait, that, pure oh, that oh wasn't necessarily a good oh. It was just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. That's, yeah. their, that's where they went. Yeah. But. Well, and, and I mean, I, I would say like, you know, I. The times that I have worked with casting directors have always actually ended up being very fruitful and very helpful. And a big part of it is because you are in the same way that like you hire a cinematographer because they know what lights look good on what skin and background and everything. They have this like institutional knowledge because of all the stuff that they've been doing and that that's what you're relying on. That's what you're like getting. And the same thing with casting. It's like, you have seen, you know, casting director has seen, like that's their job is to watch. Right, we've met dozens and dozens and dozens, thousands, and yeah. dozens of actors thousands. act. Yeah, and and to get to know them a little bit too, you yeah. know, like in a ways that maybe a director is not going to be able to in the course of like a, you know, five minute audition or something, and so. Like you're part of the painting. Well, we way. also yeah, and we also get all the feedback from the other directors that work <clears throat> right, with people. For sure, so we know. Yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then I'm also able to introduce you to people that you've never totally met, right. Yeah, that, that just especially if you're always looking through your circle of your network, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like with with <clears throat> you know with with Vicky, like <clears throat> bring her on for to find the the main part in um, in Lovers was just like totally essential because I knew I think none of them mm -hmm. maybe i'd seen a couple of them and like a couple of my student my friends like you know um indie short films or something you know but like the vast majority of those 25 actors didn't know yeah maybe i saw their work and was like oh yeah like that's i i i i, I see that they've got some good credits and have done some good work but like i you know without her involvement without vicky's involvement i you when, know yeah yeah i would have just been like been flailing around asking my yeah. friends, like, do you know of any actors around this age who would be willing to go up to Utah for like two weeks and, yeah. you know, so. In, so in the process, uh, is there a certain, like, that just, is it a gut? Like when you say I'm gonna hire or? <clears throat> um, after you go, after they yeah. qualify, after they, like that decision is. is Right. I mean, you're at, you're about to, you know, like you said, you're gonna go, this is family. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I. I I, yeah, it's it's so much easier on smaller projects, you know. Yeah. Like we, I did the short film not too long after um, uh, uh, Lovers of Hate called The Fickle, where it was like the idea is that this woman um, goes through her morning and she interacts with thirteen different guys, and you kind of the guys keep switching, and you basically realize that she's reliving thirteen failed love affairs. So it required. 13 dudes. <laughs> and so uh, uh, Vicky again helped me with that casting process. Um, and we had uh, a budget. It was like a branded content things, like funded by the USA Network. And like we were getting ready. And we, you know, we had our, our shoot date. It was like February. And I was like, okay, we got to like cast 13 guys. And of the 13 that we ended up with, like, you know, they all like you did exactly what. Um, uh, you know, I needed to do and each one of their acting moments was like literally 10 or 15 seconds, you know. Um, <clears throat> but at a certain point, it was like, OK, well, we, <clears throat> we can keep looking at people or we can just go with people that we have because we have, you know, um, th this is when we're going to this is when we're going to shoot. And we just have all these other things that need to happen to, to get that rolling. 
Um, so I didn't agonize over those decisions as much as I would have over casting somebody for Lovers of Hate or even for Love and Air Sex, you know, like the <clears throat> casting that lead that that lead role he was going to be in, you know, you know, a quarter of the movie. So it had to be somebody who was like, you know, as as good as I could as I could find. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's it's sort of proportionate, I guess, to like their screen that's, time. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's important. Yeah. And just how big of a project of it's going to be uh, it's going to be. Um, but. You know, yeah, I've I've pretty much always felt good about who I ended up casting. You that's know. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never that's had. That's yeah, good. I've never had like. Oh, I should have went with the other guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, not with not for any big parts. Okay. No, I mean there 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 maybe have been moments where I'm like, ah, they didn't quite deliver as much as I thought they would, but it's always been like smaller parts, so it's like, eh, that's okay, you know. Yeah. Well, it was delightful to have you call me and literally yeah. say, do you want to make this movie with me? <laughs> Nobody had ever oh. asked. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah. always like something you're trying to get, you're right. trying to get, right. you're trying to get. Are they going to hire me? Are they going to hire yeah. me? And you called and you asked. Oh. It was really sweet. Oh. And then you cool. showed up with a bottle of champagne when we got into Sundance. Yeah, that was so cool. <laughs> was like, that was fun. And I don't know why you think it would be a hardship to go spend three weeks in that house in Utah. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, well. Floor to ceiling glass. I guess it was just like with the Motley crew of this is the true. people who, yeah. This you know, is true. But, I've had way more Motley. Yeah, but but I mean, it did. A it did, ski chalet. It did feel, you know, we everybody made dinner at least once, I think. And uh, yeah, we had a, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, watching the movie again, I was just like, it was in a way like I, having stress, uh, uh, you know, um, flashbacks. PTSD, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But but also like, you know, partnered with like so many great moments, you know, yeah. and just like, and just thinking like how much how much fun we had yeah. up there. I mean, there were moments that were not fun, but there were moments in the movie that are not fun, so they weren't really supposed to be fun, you know. Yeah. Um, but but in terms of just like. Yeah, I don't know, and and it was just uh, yeah, it was a uh, it, it felt it felt charmed um, as as a project, you know, especially it's when it life. somehow got into Sundance. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so yeah, much for you. talking with yeah, us for about sure. all of it. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. your insight and your yeah. wisdom. And, yeah. and great job, guys. It was really, yeah, really it was good. Oh, cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you. you. I was very. It was very led by Brian. I mean, I think, you know, I can only do so much, but when the director creates such an open atmosphere and line of communication and is willing to, like, go and expose and let you know you're safe and all those kind of things, like, yeah. he's very hands-on and involved in that way. And I think that makes a difference in an actor's performance and in a in a casting situation, too. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. well, thanks, thanks, Brian. Yeah, thanks to you guys. Cool.